My name is Mia Jali. I am right now from New York City, um, but originally from Norway, born in Algeria. The um, church center actually was built when about three years after I started working for the Women's Division and Board of Missions. Uh, we used to have a, a uh, uh, offices two blocks from here on 46th Street and 1st Avenue in the Carnegie uh, building, which was a very important uh, uh, center uh, working on, on peace issues. Um, but we felt it was very important at the time to uh, find a way to be a witness as um, an ecumenical movement uh, to our belief and affirmation of the United Nations. And so the idea of the Church Center for the UN was born uh, out of the ecumenical movement here in the United States and, and even uh, probably with a lot of consultation with the World Council of Churches at the time. The Methodists took on the project, so it was a Methodist building as far as the upkeep and maintenance. Uh, and in 1984, the Women's Division uh, took it over uh, for the United Methodist Church. Uh, but it is still not only an ecumenical building, but it is open to people of all faiths and organizations and non-governmental organizations. In college, I um, worked with the um, Methodist student movement in college and um, we decided to have a special a general assembly, what's called a mock general assembly in my college which was Millsats College in Jackson, Mississippi, which was going through a lot of very difficult times because of segregation in Mississippi. And um, they sent me to New York to uh, what was called a Christian Citizenship Seminar set up by the Board of Missions uh, for students from around the United States. And that's when I began to really realize the variety of things that one could be involved in and express one's faith. So uh, from, from many years ago, that was 1959, uh, I was able to begin to see how at the United Nations one uh, had a chance to witness to uh, what our understanding was of justice, and particularly of relationships. What are just relationships? There isn't anything about human rights in, um, in our Bible, but the story, the biblical stories of relationship between people individually as collectives and with God are, are full. Uh, uh, well expressed throughout the biblical history. So that's a very exciting uh, prospect to be able to, to witness to that at the United Nations without becoming a, a missionary, but being in mission. There was a point in um, oh, this is when I was living in Algeria, where my parents uh, realized that we would end up going to the university probably here in the United States. And we needed to have a little more experience with uh, schools that were perhaps a little more open than the ones in Algeria. There were good schools. But you would, uh, they were for boys, the boys and girls were separate. So there was this wonderful school in, in France that um, I and my sister ended up 
going to for a short time. And we would come back, we would go back and forth for Christmas and summer vacations. Uh, we would take most of the time, we, either plane or ship. This time, we were coming back by ship, and it was the mother of one of uh, my friends who went to school with us, who was a French Algerian, was with us on the ship. And I was, we were getting closer to, the, to Algiers, so I called him over and I said, come and see, come and see. And he came over and he was standing next to me. And uh, his mother called him away. And I didn't understand it. She didn't call me away, she only called him away. And I later, I asked him, I said, why couldn't you stand with me? And he said, because all those Arabs standing, you know, standing there. I had no idea what he was talking about. I just was totally clueless. But it disturbed me so much, so when I saw my parents, the first question I asked my father, I said, what is wrong with standing next to an Arab? And that was the first time that I realized that there were people in Algeria that lived in Algeria, but that stayed separate from Arabs and couldn't even stand next to them. And that was first time that I really experienced what uh, racism was all about, or discrimination was all about. That is, to me, if anything, uh, a turning point where I began to realize there were some terrible things in the world and if there was anything that I wanted to be part of was to to work with people on changing those kinds of attitudes. When the 50th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, our bishop, Dale White, wanted to write about, he wanted to make an apology for the, the bishops of the, uh, the United Methodist Church for not talking about we're not expressing enough about women, the role of women, gender equality, and um, his whole approach obviously was um, seeking human rights is a way of seeking a just peace. And it's a way of overcoming and resisting uh, hunger-making systems. He always saw things in a systemic way, and also a way of overcoming war-making systems, and desert-making systems, and um, confronting domination patriarchy. This was a document really written to honor the Declaration of Human Rights, and to see it in a, uh, from a Christian perspective, from, uh, from our understanding the story of the biblical text. Yeah. Even before the United Nations was uh, a reality, the churches had already proclaimed in their pillars of peace that one of the aspects of um, an international institution needed to be human rights. And we repeated it when we rewrote the Pillars of Peace many years later uh, for the 50th anniversary of the United Nations. Um, I also think that there was a lot of, there were a number of people who worked on the Declaration of Human Rights that did it from a Christian motivation. Uh, 
I think Eleanor Roosevelt herself. Um, but she also was a good friend of uh, Frederick Nolde, of uh, the then World Council of Churches. Um, as you know, as a good Lutheran, you probably know who Frederick Nolde is. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, he worked out of a Christian perspective and understanding. 